if you see the pharmacological therapy, the guidelines that are being recently followed is according to 2017 guidelines, which has been developed by American College of Cardiology or American Heart Association or Atherosclerotic Cardiovascular Disease Risk Estimation. These particular societies have guided the threshold for initiation of the blood pressure and lowering the medication. Now, let me tell you what are all the various guidelines. The first important is, when is that we need to use the blood pressure lowering medication? That is indications for the use of the blood pressure lowering medication. First and foremost, it is the secondary prevention of recurrent cardiovascular disease events in patients with clinical cardiovascular disease right what will be that what will be that cardiovascular disease defined by with coronary heart disease congestive heart failure and as well as stroke now with this particular features if the systolic blood pressure of the individual is if it is more than 130 millimeters of mercury or if the diastolic blood pressure of the individual, if it is more than 80 millimeters of mercury, then it is an indication that you need to start the antihypertensives. That is secondary prevention. Whereas primary prevention in patients with an estimated 10 year atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk, if it is more than 10%, and if the systolic blood pressure is more than 130 millimeters of mercury or diastolic blood pressure if it is more than 80 millimeters of mercury that also it is an indication to start the antihypertensives and the third one is the primary prevention of the cardiovascular disease risk and low cardiovascular disease risk in patients with systolic blood pressure of more than or equal to 140 and diastolic blood pressure of more than or equal to 90 millimeters of mercury. So these are the indications for use of the blood pressure lowering medications. So secondary prevention, primary prevention, if SBP is more than 130 and DBP is more than 80, whereas primary prevention of cardiovascular disease and low cardiovascular disease risk patients, if SBP more than 140, DBP more than 90, then you need to start the antihypertensive medications. Next. Next is blood pressure goals for patients with hypertension. What is the blood pressure goal? For adults with confirmed hypertension and known cardiovascular disease, or if the individual is having 10 year atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease events risk, if it is more than 10%, in this clinical scenario of the patient, the target blood pressure, it should be less than 130 by 80 millimeters of mercury. So, this is the blood pressure goal for patients with hypertension in the following clinical scenario. That is the second thing where you need to start antihypertensives. Third is, there are certain exceptions for this blood pressure target of less than 130 by 80. What are those exceptions? Now, less than 130 by 80 millimeters of mercury is not required. That means there are some exceptions not required in patients of age more than 80 years right in patients of age more than 80 years second patients previously untreated for hypertension who experience an ischemic stroke or transient ischemic attack and they have the blood pressure less than 140 by 90. That means a patient who is being 
acclimatized or accustomed to a higher blood pressures because of not treated initially in them if you try to reduce the blood pressures they are at risk of development of ischemic stroke or tia so in them less than 130 by 80 is not required next in cases of acute therapy in patients with hypertensive urgencies and as well as the hypertensive emergencies so in these scenarios also acute reduction of the blood pressure to less than 130 by 80 is not required because if you try to reduce that there can be an end organ ischemic damage so these are the possible exceptions to therapeutic target of less than 130 by 80 millimeters of mercury so whatever we have discussed the indications for use of blood pressure lowering medications now this is the table for that first one is the indications for use of blood pressure lowering medication number two blood pressure goal for patients with hypertension right third is possible exceptions to the therapeutic goal of less than 130 by 80 millimeters of mercury so this you need to strictly follow which has been given by american heart association in 2017 right and once you start the antihypertensive drugs there is a considerable variation in individual responses right different classes of antihypertensives have different individual responses right and the magnitude of response to any single agent may be limited by activation of the counter regulatory mechanisms so different antihypertensives they have different variable responses now to achieve the goal blood pressure with single antihypertensive it may not be it cannot be done you need to use minimum of more than or equal to two antihypertensive agents right more than or equal to two antihypertensive agents should be used in order to achieve the target blood pressure right and most of the time you need to use combinations why is that you need to use the combination of the drugs whenever you are using the combinations the dosage requirement of the molecules will be less when the dosage requirement of the molecule is less the adverse effects which are associated with the drugs can be reduced so preferably it is better to use combination of agents with different antihypertensive mechanisms right and whenever you are selecting the antihypertensive agent or whenever you are combining the antihypertensives it should be individualized what all you need to take into consideration whenever you are selecting various antihypertensive agents that includes right that includes you need to take into consideration the age of the individual cvrt of hypertension other cardiovascular disease risk factors comorbid conditions practical considerations related to the cost of the medication side effect and as well as the frequency of the dosing so all these parameters need to be considered whenever you are starting the antihypertensives or whenever you are combining this antihypertensive agents now let me tell you what are all the various oral agents see we have a big list of the antihypertensives right we have ace inhibitors angiotensin receptor blockers then alpha blockers then we have aliscarin that is direct renin inhibitor then we have beta blockers then we have both alpha plus beta blockers then we have calcium channel blockers then we have diuretics right then we have centrally acting sympatholytic agent like clonidine and all next we have aldosterone receptor antagonist that is your spironolactone and epilirinone so we have the various classes of the antihypertensives among all these various classes of the antihypertensives what is considered as the first line antihypertensive okay you take any age right particularly because the indian scenario let me tell you in the blacks and you consider any age of the individual the first line antihypertensive
that will be calcium channel blocker or diuretic right calcium channel blocker or the diuretic whereas what is the second line antihypertensive the second line antihypertensive will be ac inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blockers or beta blockers right or vasodilating agents should be used so these are the second line agents what are the other alternatives the other alternatives are we have the alpha blockers right and we have also alpha agonists which alpha agonists that is centrally acting alpha 2 agonist so by acting alpha 2 receptors within the central nervous system that will inhibit the sympathetic outflow example is your like clonidine okay right then these are the alternatives and for resistant hypertension what is the preferred drug for resistant hypertension we give spironolactone so this spironolactone it is an aldosterone receptor antagonist so this is the first line and these are the second line agents right so these are the antihypertensives that are being recommended 